All right, so there's been a lot of talk about AI in popular media, especially as it relates to commercials, but I wanted to talk about it as it relates to gaming, because there has been a lot of discussion about that and how AI is going to be used to make games, and, you know, a lot of people saying, well, game devs are going to be obsolete, and we're not going to need game devs anymore, we're just going to put in a prompt and be able to play a game because the AI will make it for us on the fly, uh, and, you know, that is something that people are heading towards, specifically the one I want to talk about today is Google with their attempt with Genie 2. Uh, it was in the news not too long ago. It came out in December, and a lot of people were talking about how that was going to be like the future of gaming, and, you know, that's going to replace everybody, and that's the way gaming is going to work. Uh, I personally don't think so, and I wanted to get into the details on that and really talk about how it works and why I think that that is not the approach that's going to be able to uh, supplant your game devs from your games, uh, at least not in the near future, and especially with this approach, not at all. Uh, so let's just jump right in, and we'll just talk about this. Uh, this is actually Ray from Google, and they talk about their Genie 2, a large-scale foundation world model. This is an evolution of some things that they've been working on for a while, and it actually came from, you know, as it would the name would assume, Genie 1, uh, which was basically this, but in a 2D world, and Genie 2 is taking that to a 3D environment, third person, you know, WASD movements and uh, mouse look, and just expanding upon the mechanism to be able to make that work. Now, it looks very impressive. I mean, this is an extraordinary achievement to be able to basically put a prompt in and generate a world that you can walk around in and, and to a certain degree even interact with. Uh, as well as having like NPCs and, you know, basically game mechanics, limited game mechanics, but game mechanics in these games, uh, you know, just based on that prompt, which is pretty impressive. Uh, you you got to hand it to Google on, on getting it this far and making it this convincing. But uh, the way it works is the way I, the thing I have a problem with and the, why I see this as, as just being a neat little toy and not really being the replacement for games uh, or for game developers going forward. So the way it actually functions is it's an evolution of the image generation model where you're putting the prompt in or generating or gives, providing it an image to work with and saying this is where we want to make a world from. This is the this is the thing, this is the picture that we want to have a game built around. And what it does is it kind of fills in the blanks and basically takes that interpolates it into uh, its its interactions and it has these you know these key combinations that you're actually feeding to the AI so you're when you hit W to walk forward or to move forward the AI is taking that as input into itself and saying okay well he moved a step forward or she moved a step forward or you know this boat is moving two feet forward what does the world look like that two feet forward uh, same thing with like jump or left or right or what have you uh, so it's actually regenerating the image, doing that image generation mechanic every single time those inputs are put in. So it's just feeding that through that AI process, through that neural net to come out with a different result. And you can see it's very impressive. You know, it's got a lot of training, a lot of parameters behind it to be able to pull that off in a convincing manner. Um, but that's basically how it works. And that is a big limitation because really the only thing that this... AI can do is generate based on that image. And you'll see some of the limitations as we get further into this. But uh, before we get into that, though, you can see kind of how it works here. So you've, you've been provided basically a picture of a little robot in a forest, and it just fills in the blanks and does the uh, the AI image generation mechanics and, and basically generates those pictures on the fly, those frames on the fly, to allow you to look like you're in a 3D environment walking around. And they've gotten it to the point where effectively it can it can in remember its environment up to a minute. Uh, so if you walk like, you know, if you walk forward 10 feet and then you walk backward 10 feet, that backward 10 feet, it's going to look exactly the way you started. So it'll remember what the world looked like back then and it'll bring you back to that and it won't be, you know, it'll have object permanence effectively up to a minute. Uh, but if you walk for like five minutes forward and you walk five minutes back, uh, the thing back from five minutes ago is not going to look the same as it was when you started. And uh, that is a problem. That is something that's going to be an extremely big challenge to overcome because you're going to need exponentially more computational power, exponentially more memory, 
exponentially larger and larger neural networks to be able to maintain that permanence. Uh, and if we're talking about, you know, current gen tech being able to store a minute, it's going to be very difficult to make a game that has object permanence and, and that consistency out to like the, the multiple hours or even dozens of hours uh, that modern games have. So you're going to lose a lot in that, in that process. You're not going to be able to get there from here. Uh, so this, this process isn't going to be able to make a AAA title. It's not going to be able to make one of those very immersive games in, in indie or even double A. Uh, it's just not going to, it's just not going to cut it. And there's no, there's no easy way of shortcutting that to my understanding. So the computation power is going to have to be exponentially more. And it is, you know, even though Moore's law is slowing down, Moore's law being what it is, it still isn't going to be enough to get there from here because, you know, that's that's just so far down the road. It's so much more that it's going to need to have. Uh, and, and we're talking about density of a neural network, which is, you know, an order magnitude more computational power for every increment of that density. So it's it's like an order of magnitude on top of an order of magnitude. So it's, it's well beyond Moore's law uh, to be able to, to reach those you know, five minute, 10 minute, 30 minute, two hour time frames where you're maintaining that persistence. Uh, so I can see where that's going to fall flat. Uh, that's not to say that there isn't value here, that there isn't something definitely worth exploring going down this road in AI, but it's not going to make the kind of games you, you guys want to play. Uh, it will make some neat stuff. And there is certainly room in gaming for something like this and, and being able to basically put a prompt in or put an image in or put a combination in and be able to explore the world that it creates. I mean, that's a neat concept. That's a neat toy. And certainly there is room in gaming for something like that. It's just not going to supplant our other games that we like to re really sink hours into. Uh, you know, this is not going to be the replacement to, to a Mario game because you're not going to be able to make the kind of games that Nintendo makes for Mario. Uh, with this kind of me mechanism, it's just not going to work. Um, it's not going to have that depth. It's not going to have that detailed storytelling. It's not going to have those integrated game mechanics and that object permanence that Mario games have to uh, be able to be convincing enough to want to sink the time in that people sink into a Mario game. Uh, and that's the same for any other genre out there. I mean, you've, you've got, you know, very detailed, very expansive worlds that require a lot more than a minute of object permanence. But, you know, like I said, evolving this forward and making it more comprehensive is certainly valuable, and it does have a place in gaming, but, you know, that right alone, right there, it just kind of kills it. Now, the other thing I've noticed with this, and this is something that they could potentially fix down the road, is you get an image to start with. So this is all it has to work with is this starting location, and you know, as you get further into that world, you can notice some degradation. And it's it's really obvious here on the left. Uh, this is with this uh, mountain scene. You can see the mountain. You can see all the other stuff. And you get to the water. It does recognize that it's water. And you do swim in it. It doesn't quite look right. Uh, but I think that's partially because of the degradation from the distance. Uh, but then, you know, it goes through this, this kind of road-looking material and you know that was not part of the original image it's just kind of filling in the blanks and you can see it's getting blurrier and it's getting darker and it's getting like more abstract as you get further and further in uh further and further away from that starting point it just kind of loses its understanding of what it should look like like, like those are supposed to be trees and they you know a human would take that and you know use the original trees the original trees right there like on the left and the right and say, all right, they're the same trees, so we're just going to fill them in over there, and it'll be fine. You know, we'll just put more trees that look like those over there. But the, the AI doesn't know that. It doesn't have the understanding to be able to do that and kind of use that imaginative capacity that we as people have to fill in those blanks in, in a good way. It just kind of degrades over time, and it gets darker and blurrier and, and weirder uh, the further in you go. So that's something that definitely needs to be addressed it's not going to uh, be easy to do, um, but, you know, it, it could happen. And theoretically, I mean, there's nothing that says you couldn't create multiple images in different locations and be able to kind of like stitch them together uh, and, and build a world that way. That That's a possibility uh, where you have like, 
you know, effectively keyframes or key locations in this in this respect. And that allows the AI to kind of fill in those blanks in a way that makes more sense. Uh, that's a, po a possibility here. I don't know how well that would work, but, you know, it is it is something that they might look into. Uh, the other thing, I mean, there's some, you know, it's typical AI oddities like on the right here. You can see this guy's like kind of blurring in and out and, and doing some weird stuff. Um, but they do have like interactivity. Uh, and that's that's an interesting thing. Like down here, you can see this guy's popping these balloons and the balloons kind of look turn into like apples, uh, which is weird. But again, that's AI for you. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be um the kind of experience that you would expect from a normal game but it, you know it's got that more ai dreamlike state to it you know it's not like it's not that it's it's you know it's that ai dream state that weird fever dream kind of thing uh they've they've done a lot over the years over the past couple of years to really tone that down but it's still there it's still obvious i mean it, it, that balloon turned into an apple uh so that's you know that's part of ai's weirdness uh, the other thing that's kind of neat on the right here is the um, the barrel. It blows up, uh, so you can have, like, explosive things. You can have interactivity. Uh, it does kind of blow up weird, but, you know, again, that's AI for you. Uh, and then in the center picture here, you can see you, you can open this door and walk through it, and it kind of fills in the blanks from there, uh, which that's really neat. I mean, that's that's a lot of, uh, a lot of filling in the blanks there. And that's kind of cool to see because that kind of lends itself to the AI, AI knowing the scenery and kind of filling in the blanks and, and coming up with its own solution for what's behind that door. Um, that said, though, I mean, again, there's nothing that says you couldn't say this is what this room looks like. This is what that room lo looks like. And between them is this door. And so it would just know already because of the image that you're giving it for that room. Uh, that it would fill in the blanks and, and build that room out as it needed to. Uh, so, you know, there are potentials here. There's a, there's a lot of potential here. And, uh, you know, it's kind of neat. But like I said, this is not going to be uh, something that is going to give you the kind of games you're used to playing. It does give very interesting visuals, very, uh, very good looking visuals. I mean, you can see the water effects here are just phenomenal uh, on these two ship scenes. But, you know, it's not going to be... It's not going to be Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It's not going to be, you know, those kind of games. It's it's more of a dreamlike state. It's more of a environmental exploring state. And game mechanics, while they are there, I don't know how well they could um, implement game mechanics across the board on a prompt-based thing. I mean, that would require a lot more training than this, this uh, currently has in order to have those mechanics actually mean something. Uh, because even, like, you know, popping that balloon what does it do it doesn't give you anything for it it doesn't really have any mechanics behind it aside from i think a basic score in the top left there that might be just a basic score uh but you know it, we're used to a lot more complicated mechanics these days uh than simple you know popping balloons and getting points for it so it, it is going to take a lot more than this to to get it to a point where it'll replace real games and and you know like i said i don't think there's enough computational power available even as we go forward in technology uh, and, and come up with better processing and better graphics, you know, better GPUs for um, for this kind of stuff. You know, as we go down that road, even then, I think it's going to fall short and I think they need a different solution than this. But it's not to say they won't come up with one, but, you know, this is the best I've seen so far. And, uh, you know, I'll put a link in the description for this uh, this page, this Genie 2 page, so you guys can check it out on your own. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what I wanted to talk about. Just, uh, it's getting better, but I still can't see it replacing game devs. I can't see AI coming to the point where it has the imagination and the creativity and the ability to, uh, build these worlds out in a way that is sufficient. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I have, a have an issue with is all of our games are basically 2D or 3D modeled. So most of them are 3D modeled these days. And 3D modeling, AI is just not good at it. It, it takes a lot to do that um, because usually what people do is they start with a point cloud and build like volumetrically based models from that. And it ends up looking like really weird and not, not quite to where it needs to be. Uh, and even if it looks good, that point cloud is so dense and it doesn't know how to 
it doesn't know how to shrink the, the polygons. It doesn't know how to bring it down to a reasonable level. So you've got this massively complicated thing that is basically just a box, uh, but it's got, you know, two million polygons in it and uh you know gpus can't render that kind of stuff so it's got it's got some way to go on on 3d um you know 3d polygon generation 3d object generation before it can be reasonable in that capacity but that is an avenue that i think could pay off in the future where you effectively teach the ai how to build 3d objects how to put them all together in a scene and build a game based on that kind of like what we do as developers right now uh, if you could teach an AI how to do that, that would be a more effective way to generate a game. Uh, and maybe it, it wouldn't be on the fly like like Genie 2 is, but I think that would be a far more effective approach at game development because it is the optimized approach that we have basically built over the last 20, 30 years to come to the point where where we're at and... You know, there's I can't imagine any more efficient way of doing it uh, with the computational mechanisms we have, with the GPUs we have, with the with the computers we have. That is the most effective way to render a game and play a game in this day and age. It's it's way more efficient than Genie Two is with its massive, you know, massive uh, neural networks generating these images, uh, trying to come up with uh, a new image for each frame of the game. Uh, so. If that would approach was was explored, that could potentially uh, be competitive with with human beings in, in making games. But uh, again, you'd have to uh, put a lot of work into that. And I'm not aware of any project that's currently working on anything remotely like that. Uh, the most I've seen is some very primitive 3D model generation uh, that fell very flat because uh, I was like kind of excited about that. I was like, wow, you know, I can generate a couch and say, you know, give some prompts and then the couch pops out and I can use it in my games. But no. Not even close. It doesn't look good. It looks weird. And then just trying to, just the work that would be involved to trim down to, to retopologize it is just gargantuan. It's, it's more work than it would have been to just model the couch myself. Uh, so I kind of abandoned that. And that was a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at with AI. Uh, still falling short, but you know, it's getting better. So I don't know. That's what I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these kind of things, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you guys later.